Alrighty. We're back. More weekly live stream Shadowrun 5th Edition adventures. Stream our sessions live on Twitch TV beginning at 9.30 p.m. Central Time every Sunday evening. Afterwards, you can find them uploaded to my YouTube page as well as a written write-up on my blog, both of which you can find links to over on my profile. I am Eric Watson, your Game Master, and this is my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash gorbash722. You can also follow me on Twitter at RogueWatson, and I seem to be mostly over my debilitating chest cold congestion bullshit I've had for the last uh, three weeks. Hopefully I will not be coughing and hacking the entire time and snorting. Holy cow. Ah. Uh, it's been terrible. Joining me, as always, are our regular cast of Shadowrunners, Chris, playing Ursa the Troll Shaman. Hello, Chris. Hello, how's it going? Good. Heather, playing Mount of the Street, uh, Human Street Samurai. Hello. Raymond, playing Saren the Human Decker. Hello. And Reese, playing Falkirk the Elf Adept. Hello. For our campaign, we use Roll20.net. For video sharing, we use Google Hangouts. And for broadcasting and streaming, I use Open Broadcaster Software. And much of our music is by Perturbator. And uh, usually I would do our previously on uh, little kind of mini recap, but this is actually our first session of our new adventure. This is now our third ever uh, Shadowrun live stream adventure. And it is called The Bodyguards. Um, I, if you look back at the at the very first adventure, I had a neat idea with like the title coming up during like a cool like hook part of the adventure, and I already kind of dropped that. <laughs> I was like, whatever, because I use this as like the splash page for YouTube. It's kind of like the cover of each one, so I just have the title oh, yeah, on there to yeah. help differentiate each one. So I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna bother like. That's that, that's right. The first one, you didn't tell us the title until after the explosion. <laughs> after the explosion, and it goes, oh, that's such a cool idea for Hook, but, yeah. Ah, uh, not, a, not every movie needs, needs a prologue. No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, no cold back. openings anymore. <laughs> if, no. I get, if I get fancy with it again, maybe we can, Yeah. maybe we'll roll with it, but, uh, so yeah, as our, yeah, you know, as, as a new mission, am I echoing, echoing at all to you guys? So, mm -mm. Probably me. Okay. Um... It's I have a feeling I'm eventually going to get ever, kicked out of this room. Ever so slightly. <laughs> so it's been um, a couple days at least now, and I would say that probably a little over a week has passed since you guys first met at the uh, bar in the first adventure. So um, for sure you guys can uh, make sure you're fully healed and restore all your edge points for the start of our newest adventure. And I believe you guys... Had a lot of uh, kind of karma, karma expenditures. You know, basically the shadow runs process for uh, leveling up, as well as any kind of uh, shopping and purchases we can make, which we can actually do that. Um, you know, with that whole like extended negotiation test system that we did uh, last session, if we want to actually role play a little bit of the acquiring of any kind of new gear, um, weapons or otherwise. But uh, in terms of karma, I thought. If there's a way you guys want to like role play, just kind of what you've been doing over the, what your character has been doing over the last. Um, thanks, uh, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> um, what you what your character's been doing over the last couple of days um, in order to get whatever karma or items or something. So. Uh, okay, I'll go. <laughs> um, at the end of the last adventure. Ursev, with a desire to reconnect with his uh, patron mentor spirit, it's, me it's called mentor spirit, um, walked out into the woods for a few days. Um, I don't know if there's any woods around or not, but he found some. <laughs> <laughs> In the urban sprawl of Seattle, where your characters it's are right, currently yeah. located. He hiked out. Um, and after a few days, he comes back. And he's got a bear skull I fixed to his shoulder pad. <laughs> oh Lord! And awesome, a Seattle bear. He's, he's, <laughs> he's like I have communed with my mentor spirit. I've had to prove my worth. I killed him. And I kill. Yeah, I, I had to kill my mentor spirit oh, to God. prove I to prove I was worthy of it. That's hardcore. Yeah. 
So now he's even more dedicated to his mentor spirit, to the to the concepts of strength and protection. And now he's got his, he's now he's got a power focus that he can use to increase his magical powers. Nice. Mm-hmm. So that's what I've been doing. Way to role play not having to actually buy this item. <laughs> he went to the woods and just acquired it. I, that's right. I uh, went to the local community center and took some leadership courses. <laughs> <laughs> some some adult classes. Yeah. Adult, class. yeah. adult learning. Leadership 101. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's good to keep learning. Uh, how to be a more effective person when people don't like you or listen <laughs> uh, to you. How to be a better you. How the ten habits of highly successful people. Right, how to make friends exactly. and influence people, yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> you bought did the pass. I did all right. I was I was mostly out of it. <laughs> that point, community center. So. Yes. Yeah. Saren, being the jack of all trades, decides to learn some new skill that she thinks is useful because of her previous because of the previous mission. Uh, so she goes out to work on her driving. Maybe learn how to fly a spaceship. <laughs> one of those. <laughs> how do you fly a spaceship? Well, she was rejected to that class, so oh, okay. it, it didn't happen. But at least with the, the driving and the boat class, you pay enough money <laughs> They'll give you the permit. No, they'll, they'll give you the permit. <laughs> no amount of uncouthness from that. Yeah, That's so true. your character was also, I officially saddled them with the uncouth negative quality given your previous <laughs> uh, role playing transgressions, which I've really enjoyed from a just crazy standpoint. But uh, I try not to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> your character tends to act very impulsively, and there is actually a perfect negative quality for that called uncouth, so yeah, that affects a lot of your uh, social skills and ability to use social skills in certain situations. It causes so. me to withdraw even more. <laughs> Just accurately painting how your character acts, that's all. Um, now, Ursiv, I believe you wanted to buy um, yeah, so after an actual back. place. He shows up at uh, Falkirk's. Right, do you have a Do you have a house or a I, place I to stay? Squat. Or you squat. Okay, I show I, up where you're squatting. Yeah, does that I mean you're just illegally staying somewhere? Yes. it does. I find an abandoned apartment or condo or something that no one's around and sneak in and spend <laughs> the night there. You gotta you gotta spend all that money oh. on those adult courses. <laughs> 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 That's all I can afford. I can't go to like a community college or something. <laughs> so yeah, as part of my communing with my mentor spirit, I need to set up a magical lodge for myself. So I need to buy an apartment. Okay. I need a place to meditate. <laughs> um. You can meditate at my place for the night, but I don't know what you do afterwards. <laughs> no, I need to like set up like with like fucking bones. He needs and like shit, a pentagram. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, I'll let you stay at a low light, a low low life, a low lifestyle apartment, and I'll prorate you this month if you want to just take off a thousand new yen to get a apartment that's half the cost okay. of a normal uh, low lifestyle. Our apartment's normally two thousand a month. Yes. Is that the normal rate? The low lifestyle okay. one, I believe. Yes. Can I, can I get another deal? Well, I think the rest of you have uh, places already that you got at character creation. I'm no. going to kind of keep track. We'll see how it goes, depending on how many like adventures per week we go on. But it's supposed to be you guys pay like rent every month or something. But Okay, so I spent 1000 on an apartment. I, I live in the street. <laughs> you can't all live on the damn street. <laughs> I'm going to start having you get shanked in the night. <laughs> <laughs> It's not the same deal, is it? You wake up missing your left arm. <laughs> You've been chop chopped. But but my left arm is is biologic. <laughs> it's biologic. <laughs> biologic. <laughs> it's not cyber. Man. I grew it myself. 
<laughs> That's what I'm saying. People are just coming by, hacking off limbs, and like tossing an ice pack <laughs> at you. Um, so to, to set up a magical lodge, it costs force times 500, whatever the magical force of the lodge is. And a, a magical lodge just basically, as long as you're inside of it, it increases your magic power. That's basically what it, what it is. Um, so it costs that. So I'm going to do a force of, yeah, yeah, money. You have to, like, buy, I don't know, shit to put in it, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't know why it costs money. It's, you're just... heads and stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do a force of three, so it's gonna be a fifteen hundred. Wow. Okay. After actually, in your low rent apartment with minimum security. That's right. No one's gonna want to steal this shit. It's gonna be like like animal bones and like tree limbs and <laughs> feathers. So can I live in the same complex as Reese? I'll delete, I'll take away a thousand. What complex? I move from place to place. He literally says yeah, he's a squatter. Yeah. Wait, but what did you? Why? Why did you have to pay a thousand? That was me. I, I I'm renting a place. Oh, then can I get that place too? Really? There oh. should be some kind of bonus <laughs> studio apartment. We should come up with some kind of bonus or negative depending on what y'all's living conditions are. Kind of like how uh, like the Pillars of Eternity video game does, where if you rest, you gain like a bonus to skills, depending on the yeah. spot. I feel like, cause like right now there's there's no there's no like really good mechanical way, no reason. reason yeah for you guys to have different kinds of like places to live, so I feel like if you have like a good place to live that should give you like a bonus, at least like going into the next adventure or something, because you're like you're that much more well rested whereas somebody that's squatting, is probably like sickly or something, <laughs> <laughs> or on drugs, <laughs> or on yeah, Just has some sort of bad habit. You could um, just you could just like just straight custom things. Just just you have two stun damage at the beginning of this mission. Well, <laughs> I could do that. I'd I'd rather reward people that have the good stuff rather than punish people that have the bad. Does that makes sense. Like I'd rather yeah. incentivize yeah, yeah. incentivize having good stuff rather than just punishing people wanting to live cheaply. So I'll have to okay. come up with something for uh, next time. But. Uh, since now we're caring more about our living conditions. <laughs> right. No, but seriously, I want to get, I want to get off the street. Well, then rent a place. How much money do you have? Were you really just homeless before? I thought Ursa was our only homeless person. No, I, I didn't have enough money. I spent it all on my equipment. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, it says I have it on the street. You're just living on the, your Oscar the Grouch. Mm-hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Ask one of them <laughs> if you can crash. Though you're probably well, insane how much, enough. Much, how much money do you have, sir? No, I'll I'll, I'll pay for a low lifestyle. Okay, yeah, just I'll apartment. I'll give you the pro rate for a thousand. Yeah, you can get the okay. low lifestyle. That's fine. Yeah, that's that's not a lot. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> After that I ten. Want to rent apartment. Why can I not rent apartment? <laughs> you guys got a huge payout last adventure. Like, damn. You know? So the things I want Falkirk to help me out buying. Um, I need to go to a talismonger and buy reagents, and I need to buy a combat X. Okay. And those are things I have um, to buy from. Okay, yeah, so I can go over how to buy stuff again. Um, and yeah, we can do that before actually um, starting things. So, first you can use a contact, or you can just do it yourself. And I can go over how to use contacts since we kind of haven't really uh, used them much, and now you guys have collected quite a bit. Um, um, I don't, I mean, I guess, I don't know if I have any contacts that have either one of these things. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, it, I some I, of them can be used to find items. It depends on how well they would know, and kind of the item's availability also is how well they can get it. Right. The idea is, if you just want to get it yourself, you would roll a negotiation test. Um, versus the item's availability to find it at that price. And then you can choose to add 25% to the cost of the item to get plus one dice on that test. And you can keep rolling that as an extended test to try and uh, find the item after a while. You just lose one dice every time. So you can't do it, like, infinitely. It eventually you run out of time to be able to do it. But assuming you've got, like, you know, the time, you can just shop. 
and to use a contact. Um, so using contacts in general, I'll go over this rule briefly. Um, ultimately, obviously, it's always up to the uh, my decision on whether a contact's available. But uh, if you want to use a contact for at any time in the adventure, um, you would first roll their availability, which you would roll uh, two um, d6s plus their loyalty rating with a threshold equal to their connection rating. So busier people that are more influential are kind of harder to reach. Um, and then any success on that die results in you being able to reach the contact. Like You're basically just calling them on the phone and seeing if they're available. <laughs> Um, you can attempt that once per game hour to see if they're available. Um, or, you know, depending on like once per like, you know, you have this block to talk to them, that's what you're going to get. Um, you can then use the contact's appropriate skill plus their connection rating as a modifier depending on the task. And any net hits will give relevant information or do whatever task you're wanting to do. Um, examples would be legwork or gathering information, which you would use the contact's knowledge skill, which you guys don't necessarily know what your contacts um, skills would be but you could um, surmise or just ask them at some point <laughs> um, like swag Ricardo, he's a box person, <laughs> <laughs> box person. <laughs> <laughs> um, swag you can use them to basically buy or locate goods which they would use their negotiation test plus their connection as a uh, bonus modifier for finding the item you can also get a discount um, once they find the item by rolling your negotiation test versus theirs and however many net hits you get over theirs you can get a discount of 10% and some of this stuff is Shadowrun rulebook and some of it is just me house ruling stuff and making it easy <laughs> so if anybody is reading the Shadowrun book going wait a minute that's where it's coming from <laughs> um, so you can potentially make out um, with a pretty good advantage if you use contacts um, but that being said, you probably don't want to abuse like having them find every single item for you because eventually they'll be like, no, fuck you, or they'll start charging more or something. Um, networking, you can use them to locate or um, talk to people. Okay, I'm going to at the end of the last episode. Did everybody add their reward money at the end of the last session? Yes. Uh -huh. All right, make sure that's done. <laughs> yeah. You remember how much you had before? No, that's part of the uh, I don't know if I can look. Oh, I don't keep track of y'all's character sheets. I know that. Everything is on the up and up on mine. Yeah, it, it, yeah. At this point, I just have to trust you guys to make whatever. Adjustments for the most part to your karma and stuff because I have enough to keep track of, honestly. Um, so, yeah, lock, uh, locating and talking to people, networking, you would use their etiquette skill plus connection uh, in order to either locate somebody or talk to somebody or something. Um, and you can also ask a personal favor, which is mostly either directly helping with a task or mission, um, like using a skill or even bringing them on as an NPC. Um, or getting them to like loan you some kind of equipment, um, which depends on their kind of their loyalty rating is how much they're willing to help you with however risky the job is. Um, so yeah, that's all the ways you can use a contact. Which and again, you can decide to try to use a contact at any point during an adventure. I guess when you're not in the middle of combat or something. <clears throat> all right, so we want to buy equipment. Yes. Yeah, I want to buy. You guys want to go shopping? Yes. You guys want to go shopping together? Do you want to call up anybody, or how do you want to? Have this I am on? going. I um. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we can all go together and make a date. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. Exactly. Because Falkirk's got all the negotiation skills, so I'd rather just let him do the talking for me. That he does. That he does. Um, okay. Is there anyone you want to call up or just want me to roll my negotiation? So I don't know. How does availability work? Like, can we just find something or. So. Yeah. Do you, do you know um, the item's availability in the rule book? Yeah. I can tell it's, it's a number. 
And you're basically rolling to try to beat that number. That's like your threshold. Combat X is 12R. Wow, 12 is a pretty high number. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's a uh, yeah. Pretty rare to find a uh, an X, yeah. So what are you rolling to to find it? You would roll your negotiation test, and you can add to the cost. You can add 25% to the cost of an item, and for every 25% you add, you can get plus one dice. But I can let you do it as an extended test, which means you roll your negotiation, get a number, and then like an hour goes by, and then you'd roll your negotiation minus one, and then an hour goes by, you'd roll negotiation minus two, like you'd lose a dice every time. But in theory, you, and eventually you want to, and all those hits are cumulative to where you want to eventually hit that 12. So it might take you, okay. you know, the rest of the day to find this one item or something. I've got ten dice. That's pretty good. Okay. For negotiation. What are you doing? He's being insane again. <coughs> He's shooting into the crowd. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out why my uh, melee weapon doesn't roll correctly. Is your skill correct? Because you have to add in the modifiers yourself to the skill. Yeah, my skill just says four, but for some reason it's rolling nine dice. Because it's adding your linked attribute. Well, what's your attribute? Yeah. Agility? It knows to add that? Yes. <laughs> yes, it has, it has since the very first day. <laughs> oh, man, my blaze was that high? Yeah. Dang it. You know that. <laughs> All right. Um, Apparently, so, is it? <laughs> you listed melee weapon skill as four, but under your character sheet it says blades zero, basically. Which one is correct? <laughs> oh, okay. I know what I did. I put the four in there, so it's double. So it should be actually zero on my What's weapons. Huh? So you really have zero blades, right? <laughs> correct. Okay. You That's, put, saw, you've put I, no points into it. Right. I saw the four from defaulting, and I thought that's what it was. I put it in there. Oh, no, yeah. It should be a zero, and then. It's still broken. Don't worry, I'll figure it out. Just ignore my slashing at the air. <laughs> <laughs> Why am so I so practicing? Moving on. Okay. Uh, Alright. So <laughs> if I wanted to use Jeremiah yeah. to look for an axe for Ursiv, what would I do? Run me through this scenario. Okay. You would say, I want to use a contact to do this task. I would say, okay. I want to use contact to find an axe for Ursiv. Okay. So you would call up Jeremiah Red on the comm link, and that's when you would have to roll his availability which is a 2d6, which you can roll that just by going into your character sheet and doing the um, quick roll. Um, yeah. Yeah, standard d6. You would type 2, and then you can add his loyalty rating as a modifier, which should be listed yeah. under his contacts. Which is a 3. Which is a 3, yeah. So, so zero roll. successes. But that didn't that didn't do the plus three. You should be rolling five dice. Oh, oh each one of those is uh, extra dice. Yeah, yeah. I see. So you roll the two D six okay. plus his loyalty, so it should be five dice. Still zero. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Jeremiah Red is busy right now. It's just beep, beep, beep. You are not able to reach him. Your All goal right. is to beat his um, connection rating, which would actually be pretty tough, because he's, I think, like a four connection. Correct. Mm -hmm. Um. So, d does the like R or F on a weapon mean anything to that role? No. Um, R just means it's rare, it's just which is flavorful. F means forbidden, which means if anybody sees that on your character, yeah, they'll be like, "That's super illegal." Like, you can't walk around with oh. that. Okay. Um, so now can I make separate negotiation checks like, for his axe and my pistols? 
like that. Um, or just the one for all everything. I think because those are so different, and you'd probably find those at different vendors for the most part. I'd probably make you do them one at a time. Okay. All right. Here's for the axe. So each of these is an hour. Is that what is that what it is? Give or take, yeah. Okay. And your goal is to hit twelve. Keep rolling. And you have to minus so minus far. minus a dice each time. Oh, okay. okay. I'll give you a like roll for my pistol now. A couple rolls. Okay. My pistol is three. Hmm. That's uh, much easier. If I want to buy ammo, um, should I roll for that too, or did that just come with the now, pistol? Now that I can come with the pistol, yeah. I need to come up with a good way to do ammo. I might have you all just subtract some ammo. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Only two for the pistol. All right. Yeah. So hour two for the axe. I didn't do it. Six. You're halfway there to the X. Oh, I did do it. And then... <laughs> Saren. I assume this will do. Look, I, leave me in my corner. <laughs> well, except your corner is right in the middle of the table, <laughs> essentially. One more! Um, Only one more! No, no, that was for the... Well, that was for you. That was for the gun. gun. Yeah, so you, so you got you the gun, right? You found it? Yeah. I found the gun. Okay, yeah. So yeah, you can find that pretty easily enough and just subtract the base cost of it and you can add that to your inventory along with okay. a uh, clip. I uh, wanted to add a uh, internal smart gun system to it. Does that find that uh, different? Does it come with it or does it just say it's got that available? So that might, available. That might yeah. be an additional cost. Sure, but like uh, for like a dice roll though. Mm, no, I'm not finding it. Okay. All right, here's Plus. hour three. Whoa! Wow. Hey! Does it do it? That does it. Um, you're at eleven. <laughs> you're almost there. You're really close. Like you just talked to somebody that's like, I know no, somebody that sells this. Are you sure? I thought we were at thirteen because he did. Or is that am I counting somebody else's? I'm counting. He's at somebody. eleven. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like literally, you just met somebody, a vendor that was like. I just sold my last axe, but I know somebody that's got it. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Thank Four you. hours. <laughs> Four hours later. I owe you a dinner at some point. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I'll buy you dinner. Found an axe. I'll take the use of your shower. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come over to my apartment if you ever need to shower or... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we found the items. Yes. Okay, the any... Any more preliminary sh and and you guys can actually get an another chance to shop after you receive the actual mission briefing. Okay. Um, I mean, I I'm also gonna go buy my reagents, but there's no like availability on those. You just find talismonger and that's just fine. Buy yeah, if it's just yeah, it's just a local to the shop. Yeah, if it's no availability, that means you can just walk into like any kind of Walmart type area. Right. And buy it. I guess I'm just gonna add those. Mountain, did you have any skill increases or anything? Okay. Your mic is muted, by the way. <clears throat> um, Alright, so you're going to go back to your lodge. <laughs> uh, well, I'll wait for this combat X thing to play out first. How much, like, how does that work? Like, in terms of actually buying it? You you got it. He uh, basically with Falkirk in tow, you were able to find the vendor and purchase it for the. Oh, base okay. Price, and, so. and and cost is just whatever it's base listed as. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Since you didn't add anything to the roll, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. As I said, I'm not super into the nitty gritty like abstracted role playing stuff of going around town doing <laughs> 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 buying equipment and whatnot. Um, sure. I'm gonna hang on to my pole arm. This is a walking stick at this point because <laughs> I don't want to. I don't feel like selling it. <laughs> but more so this axe is this like something you would like a giant battle axe you strap to your back, or is this like a hatchet that you would wear on your belt? So, FYI, everything I'm doing with this character is to bring him closer to the picture. <laughs> so if you're curious, look at the picture. Uh, let's see here. Okay. 
That's definitely not. That's okay. That's pretty big. <laughs> yeah, it's not like concealable or anything. Yeah. Okay. Which I don't think in in the uh, Combat X is listing. I don't think it's listed as uh, being concealable, unless you wear right. like a cloak. <laughs> <laughs> it had to be pretty big. I think it have to be like strapped to my back or something. All right. Um, so, Ursa, if you return back to your lodge, you're very proud of your um, battle axe and tow. Um, everybody else disperses <laughs> back to their various places. Now, this part is just going to be aimed at Ursa, but y'all can obviously just stay here, and you'll hear this spiel, and then we'll go from there. Um, so, Ursa, if you hear, um, basically just about 15 minutes after you walk in the door, you hear a harsh pounding um, on your door. Um which is startling because I just moved into this Right, place. yeah, so maybe neighbor or landlord <laughs> or something. I've been here for two days. Yeah. You must have moved um, into some drug lord's place. <laughs> you want to open it up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll go open the door. All right. Uh, thinking it may be a neighbor or the landlord, you open it up to see a familiar troll standing before you. The troll is dressed in a specially tailored suit to accommodate his large frame, larger even than your own. He carries no weapon that you can see. The troll looks you up and down briefly, emotion hidden behind a calm and serious demeanor. Finally, he breaks the silence. Brother, you are a tough one to find. I saw reports of a high-speed chase on the I-5, rumors of a new group of shadow runners, whispers of a certain troll dressed in tribal garb, flinging electricity from his fingers. I thought, surely this madman is not my brother. And he looks at you accusingly. Benton, it's been a long time. What... What can I do for you? The troll nods his head. I'm not here for a social call. But I'm glad to see that you are well. I have a job opportunity, one that's legitimate, good work, trustworthy people. I've been working as personal security detail for, and he hesitates and looks a little embarrassed, a singer. I've worked my way up to head of security over the last year, and she trusts me with her life. Now I need to expand my resources on short notice. I need people I can trust. He spreads his arms out and nods to you. Who better to trust than my own blood? Well, <laughs> seems you've done all right for yourself since leaving me on a doorstep. You have, to... have done all right as well, I see. And he kind of peers in and notices your uh, place, which you probably have just been put together, but now looks... Um, decently respectable <laughs> with all the knickknacks and things but he looks in and he kind of grimaces a little bit when he sees all the various bones and and uh, magical implements so. I I'd, I'd invite you in but I'm sure you're busy <laughs> I'm as it happens I'm not the leader of my group give me your number and I'll have him call you let, let, and we'll let you know our decision he, uh, he nods slowly and says, uh, I'll need to personally meet with the rest of your crew uh, anyway. Uh, if you trust them, then I'll trust you. And uh, whoever you answer to will answer to me for the duration of this mission. And uh, I'd prefer if you could gather them together and we can go over the details. I am short on time, unfortunately. And he kind of awkwardly crosses his arms and just stands there in the doorway looking at you. Fine. Give me a time and place, brother. And uh, he nods down there and he says, uh, just meet me at the uh, local soy calf shop uh, down the street. And you notice it's a little more than like a street vendor with like a few chairs on the outside. <laughs> um, and he's like, I don't want to 
tarry too far. Fine. We'll be in touch shortly. You look good, brother. And he slams the door. <laughs> All right. You hear uh, footsteps slowly nice. walking away. <clears throat> nice. I uh, I call out the rest of the group as best I can on my <laughs> technology. Yeah. Do you know what time it is? Um, it's is it, is it's it it's um <laughs> afternoon, probably early afternoon. I'm sleeping still. Okay. Well, I, I, well, I call. You don't have to answer. I call everybody. I don't. Who answers? Calls the group speed dial. I answer. Oh shit. You're still muted, Heather. Yeah, I'll answer. Yeah, I'll answer. Okay. Um. Yeah. When everybody's. <laughs> Sarah, right. Did Sarah answer? I don't know. Okay, I'll assume he did, or or she did, or I'll. Uh... Sarah's fine. Yeah, I'm so, awake now. So uncouth. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, when everyone's on the line, I'll tell them, brothers, it appears we have a job opportunity with none <coughs> other than my own brother. He wishes to meet with us. Before we meet, I'm afraid I must reveal s some slight misdirection in my own past. I am like. not of the... Oh, wait. Poor Falker. I totally name. <laughs> so, you too? You've had this happen to you twice. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you people? <laughs> Turns out I'm really an octopus. <laughs> <and> just people. <laughs> 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 Cthulhu. Yeah, I, I'm an elder god. <laughs> Um, I don't even remember the name of this fucking tribe that I wrote down. I, I, I don't think I actually wrote it down anywhere. These adult classes have done nothing to prepare me for this. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, how to deal I with am your... not actually a member of a Native American tribe. Truth be told, I'm a simple street urchin raised... <laughs> it's, a, it's a long story. Suffice it to say that Trolls, especially trolls with magical abilities, are not welcomed in the wider world. It was necessary for me to come up with an, a colorful story with which to sell myself. In actuality, <laughs> I'm simply a street urchin raised by another street shaman. And my brother, who abandoned me upon learning of my own magical abilities, has suddenly reinserted himself into our lives. He has a job opportunity for us. Why does he come looking for you? Seems he recognized me in from the uh, some of, from some of our recent exploits and tracked me down. Truth hmm. be told, I would have been fine never seeing him again, but. Here he is, and now it seems we must deal with him. And if his opportunity is solid, then who am I to stand in the way of a, a job? So, so he's trustworthy still? As far as I know, last time I spoke with him was when I was 11 and he was 13, so a lot could have happened in that time. Mm. But the job seems to be simple protection. He seems to be working for a singer. Of some sort. Okay. So, at the very least, I can't imagine a reason why we wouldn't meet with him. Well, how much does it pay? I told him I would. We would. We would meet with him, and then we would discuss it there. Okay. Your your negotiation skills are better than mine. So I figured I'd wait for you to talk to him for that to come up. All right. Well, if you think he's on the up and up, then I, I suppose we can schedule a meeting with him. What little I know of him, he's not a bad person. Okay. We all agreed. We'll meet with him. Yeah, sounds good. I'll give him a place of time. 
Yeah, so he's kind of right outside your place, Ursiv, and I assume. Ah, uh, okay. Um, Falkirk and Saren all have similar lifestyles. You guys probably might even live in a decent area nearby. Malta might be a little farther because she's got a nicer place. But, uh, <laughs> I'm assuming you guys can all reach that spot relatively pain-free. Won't make charge you for taxis or anything. Okay. I have a car. You can't charge me for a taxi. There you go. <laughs> Those of you with vehicles can just drive the vehicles. <laughs> um, so yeah, you meet a little... You meet at a little uh, soy calf shop, which is kind of a little outdoor cafe with this um, very, very... just sticks out like a sore thumb, giant hulking troll in a suit. Okay. Um, sitting on the cafe. Um, Ursiv, I assume you're kind of leading the retinue just because you know who you're looking for. So, um, okay. yeah. Benton actually is staring at you before you can even find him as you're scanning just the little few um, chairs, even though he stands out completely. But he's already... Um, he doesn't actually gesture anything. He just kind of um, stares at everybody in your group um, intensely but briefly and then looks back at uh, you and then nods and then um, you notice there are enough chairs around the table for all of you. <clears throat> okay. Brenton, this is Falkirk, Saren, and Mauta. The team you asked to meet with. Falkirk will speak for us. Greetings. You work for an elf, brother. How very progressive of you. You notice he... Uh, I wouldn't say... <laughs> he says the words um, very carefully neutral, and his face is um, also, like, just complete composure. You'd be surprised what progressive lifestyles I've grown up with, brother. There seems to be some tension between you two. <laughs> I will say... Ooh, I forgot about that guy. If he works for me, then... <laughs> that would be news to me also. <laughs> <laughs> Says, uh... I'm glad that you were all able to come. I know this is short notice. I know most of you do not know me. But you seem to work with Earth With, uh... What was, uh... What, what, oh, what, shoot. What, I, I, I forgot what it was. Was it Murray, I think? Maybe, yeah. Okay. I'll pull yeah. up Facebook and I'll look that, that <laughs> conversation up. Yeah, because he would call... I don't know if I have that in my notes. He would actually call him something different. Uh, yeah, you said Murray. Is that, is that fun? Murray, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. He says, I'm glad that you all work with Murray. And, uh, that's not my name, brother. That hasn't been my name for more than a decade now. But it used to be your name, right? As a child. But I haven't been a child for more than a decade now. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Benton seems to pause as he, like, darts his eyes to and fro and says, uh... If you don't mind me asking, how how long has your team worked together? Long enough not to be dead after a couple jobs. <laughs> First of just not. I like that answer. Well, I, I talk her, yeah. <laughs> you see the slightest twitch of a, of a smile on uh, Benton's uh, face and immediately goes back to stone cold. Boston? Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Sorry, squirrel. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you were all able to come under short notice. Um, if you can trust Murray here, then... Dude, seriously, learn to call him by his name. His name's Ursiv now. Ursiv. Good man. Then you would be able to trust me. The job to help guard the concert hall where Lana Grace will be performing tomorrow night. She's received a few pity threats during her tour around the country, as anyone with a famous face will. But Seattle is her hometown, and she's insisting I suddenly double my security forces. 
You'll be given special access passes that will get you anywhere in the building. I'd like to have as many areas covered as possible. If you've never been to a SimSense concert, it can be quite distracting. So far, we haven't had any major problems in previous shows, other than unruly fans and the occasional creeper trying to get backstage. I have a budget of 5,000 new yen per person, as well as, of course, a free ticket to the concert. Um, while you guys are talking, um, you guys can choose to uh, look up information about um, the singer, as well as ask any, obviously, relevant questions. <clears throat> Can we protect her on stage during the show? The job includes Shoot. the entire evening, which would include her actual performance. Um, and it will end whenever she has concluded with that venue and is back in her uh, trailer. And you will all be paid at the end of the evening. It's just a one night show. <clears throat> I should level up my dancing. <laughs> Benton kind of narrows his eyes uh, a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how popular is this singer? You have not heard of Lana Grace. He asked questioningly. Nope. Um, go ahead and... Oh. <laughs> I don't know how you'd roll for that. I guess if your character's interested in music at all, <laughs> but if that's not an interest, you have to do Probably not. Music, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've got area Seattle, and I was just gonna look it up on Google, but so probably um, she's popular enough where you guys, no matter what your age or background would be, you've probably heard the name at least, um, and you would recognize that as being a. Uh, basically the equivalent of a pop singer, but one that's also like younger and probably one that you don't, you know, none of you would necessarily like keep up with or anything. Well, I mean, I don't know what your characters are into. <laughs> Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, what even level even of pop singer are we talking here? Are we talking like Britney Spears no. at her prime or Hannah Montana on The Wrecking Ball? Um, it doesn't matter. Pop I'd, I'd almost say like more like Lord. <laughs> Like Lord, oh, okay. so or like, alternative, or slightly more alternative pop. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, and kind of like people know, but like uh, parents or adults would be like, well, yeah, I think I know what that, that is. Yeah, was, yeah that that kind of level. Okay. Um, so you would you would know that you guys would all know that information without actually digging any deeper. Sir, at least just played the music from his community. <laughs> 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 I've got all the albums done. <laughs> yeah, start streaming it. Yeah. Sorry, I, uh, I'm not, I'm not too familiar with her, so it's not my kind of music. Mm. Uh, Benton thing, nods and says, you. your knowledge of the music will not be required, but, um, she That's is good. popular enough to attract, um, to sell out concert halls and go on, um, national tours. Wait, so what is Simpsons? Means that the concert is um, projected in either um, matrix or sometimes astral effects to create a very disorienting, but I've been told exhilarating effect to go along with the music itself. The, the younger crowd is very into the alternative effects that can go along with listening to live music. It seems like it would make protecting her a little difficult trying to find someone who's trying to attack her in the crowd. We have not had any major incidents. We screen everyone for weapons and contraband at the entrance to any facility. Um, there have been no major incidents since I have started running things. 
We usually Yeah, but it makes it sound like there have been minor incidents. Whenever you have a crowd of people together, things can go wrong. All you can do is plan as best you can and react quickly and swiftly and professionally. So you screwed up. And we have not had any major incidents whatsoever. But apparently, with this being her hometown, she is insisting that we have more security on force. And the so you screwed up. <laughs> Why is there someone in particular that she's afraid of? Since you want to increase security in her hometown, which I would think would love her even more. He kind of sighs and looks inward for a second and says, um, "I have not been." privy to any of the personal motivations behind this request and I did not pry I am just following my instructions it seems like with all these factors that this job might you know require a little more compensation for each one of my members <laughs> um Do you want to roll for negotiation? Sure. Because you're negotiating for a higher pay, basically. Look at that. Sweet sassy molassy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what he says. Well, the fines. <laughs> Sweet sassy molassy. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it's. He uh, he sighs deeply, looks at you, and says, um, "I have not been given a higher budget for this job, but I can do what I can to talk to Miss Grace. And um, assuming your performance uh, lives up to." the necessary requirements, then I'm sure we can come up with more monetary compensation if that is all that motivates you. Well, it is a job and I am trying to look out for my team, so he nods contemplatively. Their well being <laughs> Um, can our Decker get full access to the security systems and everything? Oh, damn it. I thought you were going to say free show tickets. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the time. Benton looks a little worried as he stares at Sarah and he says, that one there is is your Decker. He's really, She's really good at what she does. <laughs> Uncool. <laughs> might be. Although I did legally purchase all the albums. <laughs> Which, that by itself, is surprising. <laughs> Says uh, she can have full access of the building. We do have our own um, technical um, professional on staff that helps uh, run the technical side of the show. So assuming they can work together, it should not be an issue. But um, I can also uh, take you to the venue and show you around so that you can get a feel for the location uh, before the show. Sounds good. Are uh, weapons going to be allowed on our persons? Says that is an excellent uh, point to bring up. In fact, I would mention that I would suggest dressing discreetly and trying to show as little weaponry as you can you, uh, I don't want soldiers walking around like it's a battlefield. Having naked weapons are just going to make people nervous, and it leads to problems. Um, if you have what, what you need, sticks? <laughs> <laughs> walking sticks with large blades at the end. If of you them. have what you need on your person, that's fine. I would very highly suggest. Um, Non-lethal rounds, we certainly don't want to create any tragic stories at this uh, location if we can help it. 
but um, and also some. Um, really, that was directed at me. Armored clothing is fine as long as you're not wearing full body armor or anything. You can. Um, <laughs> You, some of you may still want to um, stand out as security force. It is good to have them be recognizable, just not to be more of a sign of protection and assurance rather than fear and um, antagonism. <clears throat> sure. Are you going to be a work uh, around that, Malta? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think I have some rubber bullets somewhere. All right. Is there a large coat I can buy that will cover them? Everyone else okay with those rules? Yeah. So I like to go shopping before we're done. I gotta find a new gun. All right. All right. Let's go see this place. Benton nods and says the venue is near downtown Seattle, <clears throat> at a place the locals call the Dragon's Maw. It's a smaller place compared to our previous shows holds less than a thousand people and is little more than a converted warehouse. It's also outside the protection of any megacorp or logo mafioso. So all the angry young kids love it and it'll be a goddamn nightmare for us. Miss Grace insists it's what her fans want though. <clears throat> Sounds like fun. <laughs> but nods and says I appreciate your acceptance on this short notice. Um, you can either spend the rest of the day shopping or gathering supplies <laughs> as you will require <coughs> and I can take you tomorrow or we can go now and I can show you the venue and then you can do what you need tomorrow and make sure we meet up I'll give you the the time frames for tomorrow evening <laughs> Uh, what do you think, Ursiv? So basically, I'm, I'm telling you guys, if you can, you can either shop now or go to the place now. Okay. I need to buy an extra large raincoat. <laughs> Something to, <laughs> to drape over me. Yeah. So we, that all we my weapons are... First. A little bit of shopping first, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, he says, I, I can meet you guys. Um, and he kind of dials in with the the pad on his like data pad and sends you guys the links to uh, the location and he says uh, meet me here at about uh, we'll say noon tomorrow and I'll show you the place um, before anything set up just to get a feel for everything and then he cool. stands up goes to the counter pays for his drink nods once to everybody walks off um, we're going to take a quick break right now, but about an hour, um, and then we will come back and I guess do some more shopping, and then we'll go to the place. So, quick break, come back soon. Coming back.